Good morning and welcome to our service of worshipping together at home on the first Sunday after Christmas. It's lovely to have you joining us this morning. Of course those words from the squalor of a broken stable and of course we know that's where our Heavenly Father chose to lay his son and when he came among us as one of us to humble himself and become one among his children whom he loved and goes on loving each and every day. But this morning we're here to worship together so let's do just that. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We come to worship as we are, bringing with us our traditions and learned expectations. We come because we always come, and we know we will find comfort here. We come carrying people with us in our minds, those we care for and feel close to. We come because we want to explore the mysteries of faith, even if we cannot understand. We come with our hopes, with our fears, with our beliefs and our questions. We come with open hearts and minds to explore what it means to be a follower of Jesus. And we come with expectation that here, as everywhere, we will meet with God. Amen. So come softly, come eagerly, come in wonder, come in adoration, come with joy, come and see. Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. I'm going to join in singing our first hymn. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. the coming of Jesus into the world has brought great joy, great joy to so many. And the great joy we have from it is that we can have a relationship with our Heavenly Father. But it's a relationship that we sometimes mess up. And we need to go back to God again and again to say sorry for those times. So let's do that now. Hear the words of the angels to Joseph. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Let us therefore seek the forgiveness of God through Jesus, the saviour of the world. And we take just a moment of quiet to offer to God those things on our own hearts and minds, for which we each know we need his gracious forgiveness. Lord of grace and truth, we confess our unworthiness, 
to stand in your presence as your children. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. The Virgin Mary accepted your call to be the mother of Jesus. Forgive our disobedience to your will. We have sinned. Forgive us and heal us. Your son, our saviour, was born in poverty in a manger. Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. The wise men followed the star to find Jesus the King. Forgive our reluctance to seek you. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. O Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and peace, now and for ever. Amen. Now those wonderful words of the angels to the shepherds, which we these days call the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. What wonderful words of praise and adoration. And the collect for this week. Almighty God, who wonderfully created us in your own image, and yet more wonderfully restored us through your Son, Jesus Christ, grant that as he came to share in our humanity, so we may share the life of his divinity, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 61, verses 10 to 62, verse 3. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation and arrayed me in the robes of righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the soil makes the young plant come up and the garden causes seeds to grow. So the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. For science sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet, till her righteousness shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. The nations will see your righteousness, and all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name, that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You will be a crown of splendour in the Lord's hands, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to sing our second hymn, Unto Us a Son is Born.
our second reading is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 15 to 21. When the angels had left the shepherds and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which they were just as they had been told. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. So may I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, so that's it. The presents are unwrapped, the turkey's eaten, well, maybe not quite this year. Time to put the decorations back in the box, and the tree out before it drops any more needles, especially if you've had your tree up since the beginning of December. Christmas is over for another year. I wonder if, like Mary, we were left pondering about the experience. And I don't mean about why Auntie Mabel gave us bath salts again, or what to do with that bright pink scarf and glove set that you've been given. Mary did a lot of pondering, or so we're told, when she received Gabriel's message after the birth of the baby and after the visit of the shepherds, as we heard in that first part of the reading this morning. We might take a guess at what she was pondering. What is this about? Why me? Who else is coming? What else am I going? How much do I know? Who else knows what is happening? What really is happening? And so on and so on. As we find ourselves looking with Mary at the baby sleeping in this fragile, weak and vulnerable bundle, do we ponder with her, the Christ child? As we look on the Son of God lying in that humble place, his palace, a room shared with the animals, his throne a fe feeding trough, his robes strips of cloth torn by his mother, his status that of the refugee, and his visitors ordinary people like us. Do we ponder the mystery of it all, of God's love shown for us in the birth of this child, as Jesus coming to dwell with humanity at the beginning of this new relationship made possible through the child on which we gaze? I hope that we do. And I hope that we never lose the wonder and awe of and all that that means. I wonder how much pondering parents do when it comes to naming their newborn babies. Parents call their children some pretty strange names these days, which is a shame because you, you have to pity a child growing up with a strange name, and I should know. But names are important. Without a name, we don't have an identity. We're nothing. And in the second part of this morning's reading, the baby in the manger gets a name. As the visitors leave and things quieten down, the parents of this newborn baby do what all parents do. They give their child a name. But unlike most parents who consult books of baby names or Google, argue over whether to call him after the grandparents or the latest pop star, these parents know what they're to call their child. The name of the child came with the news that he was to be conceived. In Matthew's Gospel, we're told that Joseph planned to divorce Mary when she discovered that he, she was pregnant, but an angel appeared to him in a dream and told him that the child was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and that it would be a son and they were to name the child Jesus, because he will save the people from their sins. Matthew is explaining right at the very beginning that the name Jesus means saviour. In Luke's Gospel, the angel appears to Mary and tells her that she will conceive in her womb and bear a son, who she will name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestors David. Luke uses the name in a very Jewish way. Jesus is to sit on King David's throne. The name Jesus is the Greek form of the Hebrew name Joshua, as most Jews spoke Aramaic. Aramaic dialect, the name would have been pronounced Yeshu, 
the first part of Yeshua, meaning the Lord. The second part comes from the verb to save. So we're being told right at the very beginning, this is the Lord and he has come to save. When the angels told Mary and Joseph to call their son Jesus, it was a statement of faith that God does save and the incarnation of the son of God in Bethlehem would usher in a new era of salvation. The baby born in the manger was born with one purpose. He was born to be the saviour of the world. He was born to be the saviour of each and every one of us, if we just let him. This baby laying helplessly in a manger, being doted on by proud parents and visited by scruffy shepherds, isn't just here so that we can have a party, spend too much and watch rubbish things on TV. He's here for one purpose and one purpose only, to save mankind from the sin that it wallows in, to restore the relationship between God, his father and his people. The father who at great cost sent him into the world, not because he has some sadistic streak, as some would have us believe, but because he loves the world so much that he's prepared to give the most precious thing he has to save it. But for that to happen, the idyllic scene in the stable will become another scene. The scene not of a helpless baby in a straw-filled manger, but a man hanging helplessly on a cross as he fulfils the task. The scene may be different, but it's the same person. I sometimes think that the majority of people out there celebrating this Christmas season, celebrating the birth of their saviour, never look beyond the baby in the manger. There's an odd little Christmas carol, which is sometimes sung on this first Sunday after Christmas. It begins, There's snow on the mountain and ice on the pond. The wise men are home now in the back of beyond. The shepherds have left us. The heavens are dumb. There's no one to tell us why Jesus has come. And it ends, but God's in his heaven and Jesus has come to show every sinner he's welcome back home. To be this world's saviour from hunger and fear and give us new courage to face the new year. And what could we need more than anything this year? Two things, to know Jesus as our Lord and saviour and to have the courage to face this new year, a new year with all its uncertainties, a new year that follows on what has perhaps been the most difficult year that many of us have had to live through, but a year in which the baby in the manger still gives us hope and joy and love. Don't pack the baby away with the decorations, let him into your hearts. Ponder on the enormity of who he is and what he has done. Walk with him from the manger to the hill of Calvary and know him as your Lord and Saviour. Amen. And now we're going to sing our next hymn, Thou didst leave thy throne when they came down to earth for me. I got that wrong. It's in the bleak midwinter first, but the other one will come up.
course, the one who gave us everything asks no more than us to give ourselves to him. So let's affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave. He was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you, knowing that we can bring no more than ourselves, knowing that you ask no more than ourselves, knowing that in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you did all that was necessary. You made the ultimate sacrifice to show us just how much you love and care for each one of us. Help us always to remember that you are indeed a God of love. When there seems little to be hopeful for, when joy seems far away, help us to be affirmed in the knowledge of your continuing presence and your continued love for us. Lord, we pray for your church this morning, wherever it is throughout the world. A church that has celebrated Christmas in so many different ways and will go on doing so for several more weeks and days. We pray that the good news of your birth will have reached so many perhaps in different ways this year to normal. But we pray that through our words, our examples and our services, we will have touched others with your love. We thank you for the church here in our benefice, for the many members that make up that church, and for those in the community around us. Help us to be builders of your kingdom to shine your light and to share your love. Lord, we pray for our world, a world where there are still darkness, a world where man still continues to war with one another. We pray for those who find themselves refugees this morning. We may pray that they may understand something of you because you understand them. Your son too was a refugee. We pray for those who are still struggling with the coronavirus, those who are ill, those who care for them, those who are still fighting for a vaccine, and those who have the responsibility for keeping others safe. Help us, Lord, even if we don't always agree with the rules or understand them, to know what is the right thing to do. For so often we think that love is about spending time with other people, those we claim that we love. Help us to know this year that one of the best ways that we can spend love to other people is to not spend time with them, but to spend quality time with them in other ways, maybe on the end of a phone, writing a letter, on a Zoom or a FaceTime or whatever. But Lord, help us to learn to keep each other safe and respect each other's needs at this time. And we pray for our community round about us. We thank you for the wonders of community life, the way we pull together to do things for one another, particularly here in this community, five individual communities, and yet five communities which all seem to pull in the right direction. We pray for those in our community who are not well at this time, 
particularly those we know. We pray for them that they may know your healing hand, that your will will be done. And we pray to you for those who care for them, that you will give them your strength and your guidance. And Lord, we pray for those whose, whose path through this life is now ended and have now returned to be safely with you in heaven. We give you thanks for their lives, for all they go on meaning to their loved ones. And we pray that we too may one day make that journey home to be an eternity with you and all your saints. Merciful Father, accept our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now we come to our final hymn, and it is indeed the hymn, Though this leave thy throne and the kingly crown, when they came down to earth for me. So we come to our final prayer and blessing. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas season. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and those whom you love and those whom you ought to love this day and forevermore. Amen. Well, 
Thank you for joining me this morning as we have our time together at home. We'll be back in church next Sunday celebrating the Feast of the Epiph Epiphany. I think I probably should have got some new false teeth for Christmas there. But we'll be celebrating the Feast of the Epiphany and remembering the visit of the, the wise men, the three last people to turn up to pay their homage to, to Jesus. So until then, have a good week. Enjoy whatever it is you're doing. If you're alone, remember you're not alone. You're only on the other end of the phone. Get out and have a walk. Enjoy this nicer weather that we're having. And I'll see you again next week. But until then, bye for now.